Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about perceived behavioral control, which is a construct in the theory of planned behavior. I think a good um, quote to kind of frame this lecture comes from Walt Disney. He says, whether you say you can or you can't, you're right. And I think that's a really good way to kind of start thinking about perceived behavioral control. So today we're going to be talking about three things. First, we're going to define the construct. Uh, we're going to look at the construct's relationship with behavior. And then finally, we're going to look at an application of the construct. So first, let's talk about the definition. So the theory of planned behavior, as posited by Ashen, defines perceived behavioral control as a person's estimation of how easy or how difficult uh, it will be to carry out a certain behavior. So there are two pathways for perceived behavioral control to behavior. First is an indirect link. Um, so this link, perceived behavioral control is linked through behavior through intentions. Um, so the theory of planned behavior talks about how perceived behavioral control, subjective norms, and attitude all determine uh, intentions. And so, and then intentions predict behavior. So Ashton argues that when we form intentions to engage in a behavior, we take into account how much control we have over the behavior. Um, so assuming the behavior is something that we want to carry out um, and we want to do, then stronger and, and more perceived behavioral control is correlated with uh, stronger intentions to carry out the desired behavior. Uh, the second link is uh, more of a direct link to behavior. Um, so if the behavior is something that is not under full volitional control, then intentions will not be as strong of a predictor of uh, behavior. And so then um, the link between intentions and behavior depends on the amount of actual control. Uh, that an individual has. So if actual control is low, then the ability to turn intentions into behavior is low. And so in these cases, behavior is determined by intentions and actual control. So if perceived behavioral control um, is a good proxy for actual perceived behavioral control, then uh, perceived behavioral control will directly determine and can be a predictor of behavior um, independent of intentions. Uh, so you also may be thinking that perceived behavioral control kind of sounds a lot like self-efficacy from um, the social cognitive theory, and you're right, there is definitely overlap between the two. Um, and one, one argument to understand the difference um, comes from Terry uh, et al. And it, it contrasts the two based on internal versus external control. So internal control is based on the factors within an individual, um, such as ability and motivation. Uh, external control is based on factors um, outside of the individual, such as access to resources and uh, task difficulty. So Terry and her colleagues um, put, put forth that um, self-efficacy should be used when looking at internal control factors and perceived behavioral control can be used for external control factors. However, there are other uh, other arguments and um, other, other people have used uh, these two constructs in different ways, but I just wanted to highlight that there is um, uh, definitely some overlap between the two. Uh, so finally, we'll talk about an application of perceived behavioral control. One study tested the associations between uh, both direct and indirect um, measures of perceived behavioral control and intention of birth control use and uh, actual birth control use. Um, so the authors define perceived behavioral control in the study as beliefs about the presence of factors that may facilitate or impede using birth control and the participants perceive power over these factors. So the construct was operationalized using measures on a questionnaire. Um, one, for example, is they asked, um, for me to use birth control each time I have sex is, and then use the Likert scale between difficult to easy. Um, and so that's a, an example of one of the, uh, one of the measures. Uh, so this study found significant associations between um, both the direct and indirect pathways from this perceived behavioral control 
to the uh, intentions and behavior. Uh, so by now you guys should be familiar with the definition of perceived behavioral control, the indirect and direct association with behavior, um, and then finally an example of the application. All right, I hope you have a great day.